Hello, hello, this is M. Welcome to my channel. Today we have we are going to have an overview about how to successfully pass an interview. Uh, any kind of interview, no matter which will be the vertical, the segment, the type of company that you are applying for. So we will have a general overview about applying to a role each kind of role uh, we will see step by step different profiles but please do keep in mind that this video is related to the individual contributor role and please do watch the uh, management role which is slightly different so there are not main differences but there are some um, approaches that can be uh, touched in, in a different uh, way so let's move ahead and start with the basics. Uh, the very first point that we need to keep in mind is your CV, your curriculum vitae, which is your card, it's your brand, it's your image overall that you are going to present to the hiring team, to the hiring manager. So um, thinking about the, the CV, you might have different approaches. From a format point of view, you might have an online, CV which can be uploaded to a specific platform, can be uploaded to a FTP, can be uploaded to, to your personal domain, doesn't matter. If you have an online CV, go ahead and promote it. Then if you go with a traditional offline CV, which is usually a PDF document that you share with the hiring team by email uh, or, or you simply uh, share with them by, by different social media platforms. That could be also good, but uh, link it whenever possible with your profile. Keep it online whenever possible. Avoid being offline because online is bringing you a big plus. And then the third pillar or the third approach that you might have is a hard copy of your CV. If you are going to on-site a brick and mortar uh, meeting with your hiring team, please do print a couple of uh, CVs, a couple of copies of your CVs because it will make a good image. Bring your CV whenever you are going to, to meet the hiring team because that will give you uh, an additional plus. If you have um, a card, a personal card, a business card, might be from professional, might be printed by yourself. There are a lot and a lot of uh, tools that you can use to, to prepare your, your business card. Add your business card to the hard copy of your CV and bring them to the hiring team. And keep in mind two or three copy of them because usually that's what we 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 have there are one to three hiring managers so bringing three hard copies of your cv and eventually business card might bring you a big plus thinking about the cv what do you have in your cv there are a few main pillars a few main topics that you need to touch the first one and the most important one is the experience. And from the um, experience part, you can take a chronological or not chronological point of view. So you might present your most recent experiences at first and then go back um, to, to your experiences or you can start with the very old experiences that you have and bit by bit go to the current date or current uh, role that you have or the most recent one. So it's up to you how you want to highlight your chronological experience. My personal recommendation would be to go with the most recent with your current role and then to get back to the previous roles. If you don't have an experience, if you don't have um, a specific role in a specific company but you have an internship or you have uh, a volunteering role please do highlight those roles and highlight the experience that you gather through those roles for the role that you applying to keep in mind that in a general overview it's better to have one dedicated cv per role not to have one cv per 
each kind of role because each CV should be specifically dedicated to that particular role. For instance, I give you an example. If I'm doing an internship in um, in a company uh, and I'm I'm shadowing some business analytics and I'm following the senior business anal um, analysis people, then. I will highlight that experience whenever I'm applying to a business analyst, um, a forecast planner, a project manager or, or junior project manager. Please do be relevant with your CV for the role that you are, are applying to. It doesn't actually matter the experience that we have, but more than that, it matters how you fit the experience that you have to the role that you are applying to. Moving ahead to the education and qualification, there might be a balance between the experience and the education. So there are companies that are insisting more on the education or more on the experience. It depends on the company culture, profile, uh, leadership principles. Study your company and understand how much you need to insist on your experience or education, depending on their company profile. For the education part, like we, we just view for the experience, you need to highlight what you have for that company which added value you can add for that specific company. I give you a short example. So let's say that I was in the high school and I was uh, participating to a biology contest and I got the third place uh, at the national level. Then I would like to highlight that experience, that contest, if I'm applying to a company which is related to medical, healthcare, everything related to uh, biology, might be biological research. So that could be a great plus for your CV when you are applying to that specific vertical. So keep your education with the certificates, diplomas, studies, whatever you, you want to highlight, but keep in mind also for the education and qualification to be relevant. Moving ahead, another topic that is not very common for the, for the CVs is the exposure part. What's exposure? That means your active or passive participation to conferences, seminars, or any kind of online events. And then if you were active or passive, highlight the courses that you participated to or you presented to a, cer uh, a certain audience. Why? because that highlights the fact that you are always raising the bar. You are always looking for to do more, to do more than you have to do, that you are willing to learn, willing to participate to extracurricular events. So that will also bring you a big plus for your employer and indirectly will highlight the fact that you are willing to get the most of it of any kind of experience. Then the languages for the languages part is very, very important. First of all, not to forget your native language. I saw a lot of cases where people are speaking a lot about foreign languages, um, presenting their skills for the foreign languages, but we are native in a specific language do not forget your native language and then present in a clear, consistent way the foreign languages that you are, you are um, knowing or you, you work with. Keeping in mind that from a, a framework, a linguistic framework, that would be good to avoid having an A1, A2 um, um, highlights because that's usually not bringing a big plus to the company. So uh, from, from a language perspective, we have from A1, A1, A2, beginner. Then we have B1, B2, medium. And then we have the C1, C2, advanced, uh, where the C2 is close to a, a native uh, level of speaking that language. 
avoid presenting languages that you know um, by by TV you can recognize some words so really highlights the benefits that the company can use from your experience and from your knowledge and avoid bringing languages that you uh, are, are just starting with but do highlight the languages that you speak because we are talking on uh, on a on a global and then multilingual and multicultural environment then you can choose to add your personality topics that could be up to you up to your choice you can make the difference you can create a sort of unicity in your cv by presenting your kind of personality you can uh, showcase the fact that you are mainly an introvert or an extrovert uh, you are uh, mainly a creative or analytical person so you can really showcase the kind of person that you have the kind of personality that you have for the hiring manager to better understand you as a person you can choose to add that part the personality part in your cv or not depending on your personal preferences I would suggest you to really study well your your employ, employer your your hiring managers and then to choose if it's a good idea or uh, you might keep it uh, for for a, a future experience that personality part in some cases that might help you moving ahead you can also add your personal goals aside of experience studies everything that you know simply state two to three personal goals professional goals that you have why it's very important to state your goals because that will showcase the fact that you have a purpose you know exactly where you want to go you know exactly what you want to do and you are willing to develop in that specific direction so you are not fluctuating to different roles different companies different verticals so you know exactly what you want to do you go straight to the target and you are willing to work hard and to learn a lot for that specific goal so bringing the goals or your mission vision and, and value statement that could be also a big plus for your application uh, through your CV then for the skills one specific or very very particular point that I would like to highlight is always 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 to balance your hard skills with your soft skills what does it mean so aside of presenting what you know about let's say office application you know the the oracle databases you know the the um, uh, programming uh, um, coding of different companies you know whatever so you have that specific hard skills but do keep in mind that in many cases your soft skills like communication collaboration resilience patience customer orientation can bring a major plus to your application so please do balance your hard skills your studies what you know with what you are able to actually do with people what how do you interact with people which are your superpowers in terms of collaboration in terms of professional environment and then of course your contact details are very very important you need to state your your landline or your cell phone number your email address and then if you have a website if you have a, a profile that you would like to share do share it because that will also bring, bring a, a consistent plus to your to your uh, application then uh, a very important point of view is that your cv as i was uh, mentioning before it's your business card imagine that you are applying for a role where there are 300 400 people applying to and the hire manager needs only to take 10 cvs and to invite 10 people for an on-site interview then you might want to to take uh, a very short straightforward consistent and attractive cv and keep 500 to 700 words and not 
more than one page. Why? Because if you imagine the volume that the hiring manager has for about 400 CVs, they cannot read those CVs if there are multiple pages. If you have a senior role, you have a large experience, you are working in the research or you are working for a, a, gover a governmental role, then you might expand that one page to two, a maximum three pages. If you are not applying to those roles, try to keep it very, very simple, very, very short at a maximum of one page. Then, as um, we were viewing before, keep the hard and soft skills together with a key highlight on the soft skills. Avoid being theoretical, avoid being uh, stating what you know in theory, your studies, and keep insisting on your practical application, what you did, what you know, what you are able to do already, because that's what really matters and brings a, an added value for your role. Then you also need to have some key or uh, keywords, some, some uh, main uh, uh, purposes for your CV. What I mean by keywords? is that you can add, I'm a hardworking person, I have a good time management, I'm a dedicated, loyal person, willing to develop, willing to learn, um, I'm willing to collaborate with others, I'm a great um, team worker. So keep those keywords applicable and also study your employer, your hiring manager, and then adapt your keywords to that specific company, to the culture that company, the company has. Study that company and try to link the keywords that are defining you with the company philosophy that you are applying to. Avoid stating your personal preferences. Stating the hobbies is very important. If it's a, a good part of your CV, it's important, but do not insist too much on your personal preferences because that's are, are not going to make a difference for your prof professional application. So if I like to make jogging early in the morning and to feel the grass, that's zero value for my employer. So present your personality, present you as a human being, but without insisting too much on your prefer personal preferences. And then one very important point is to be unique, to be unique in any possible way. You might add a photo, you might create a, a video blog, or you might create a video of yourself and turn your CV into a video CV. You can do whatever makes your application unique, one of a kind, and can showcase your application against your competitors, against the other candidates. And avoid having a CV full of text with long paragraphs because nobody will read what you wrote in that, uh, that document. Think about your application from a very business as usual point of view. When you are applying to a company, you are not applying to a job. In fact, you are starting where you are teasing a business partnership where you need to have that VRIO, meaning that you need to bring a value, you need to showcase your value for the company, you need to show that you are rare, you are not easy to find, then that you are a not imitable uh, person, you are unique, and then that you are oriented to that specific company. Usually um, what, we, what we have, we have that VRIO perspective where the O initially was uh, a bit different, was a non-substitable uh, person. So really to have that value added approach where you are oriented to the company, you are rare, you cannot be replaced and you 
have that uniqueness you have that specific touch that only you can bring to the company and then when you apply when you talk to your hiring manager when you interact with your company keep that in mind it's your momentum but you need to act as a business partner not as an employee not as a candidate because that makes makes the dif difference when you approach as a business partner how you can answer the questions during the interview and you have multiple options of answering to those questions but what you need to have is a sort of structure and really to answer to the key question or the um, let's say not evident question that your hiring manager has which is a single one which is the value added that you have for our company so to any questions that you are going to answer you need ultimately to answer to that specific point what you are going to bring to the company and to reach that final result to really highlight what you can bring you can use the star model where the star model stands for situation task action and result what is the situation is the actual context the context at the initial state you need to present the environment the initial situation the problem that needed to be solved so really to present the context then to move ahead to the task what had to be done which was your action plan when which was your specific task what you needed to do to solve the problem that you just mentioned in the situation and then in the action part to detail your action plan to detail the task and to show how you organize this uh, the actions how you ensure the correct execution and which was your modus operandi how you acted on resolving the core issue the root cause and for the result what you can do is simply to make a balance or to um, showcase which was the impact that you created for that specific situation based on your action so really to highlight the zero to 100 impact that you created highlight the feedback that you received from peers from colleagues from collaborators from managers really the personal feedback that you received and which was the short medium and long-term impact that you created with your proposed solution so try to practice as much as possible the star model and really whenever you are answering to a question during your interview to structure it by context then action plan then action detail and the result compared with the initial situation you uh, i invited I, I invite you to look up also for the the video dedicated for the star model but today we are only going to highlight the overview about the how the star model works and i would like to insist only to one topic it's preferred you to usually use the i approach in your star model i did i decided I contacted I escalated I supervised I ensured the correct execution to insist a lot of why on why uh, while keeping your collaborators very close keeping the feedback part very close and ensuring that you are highlighting highlighting the fact that you are a good team player for the interview part then you have a few topics that you need to think of you might have a brick and mortar interview so you can go on site or you can do a virtual interview keep in mind that before acting on an interview you need to keep close the fact that your posture your view your image is going to count the most I'm not referring to the Superman posture, which is very used and very common stated. 
it could be good, it could be useful, but the main purpose is really to create a, your brand in front of your uh, employer, really to showcase that you are a confident person, you are flexible, willing to learn, you have uh, the, the will to develop and really your posture to showcase what you are saying. That's very important. Then, no matter which is the kind of interaction that you have, again, can be on-site brick and mortar or can be virtual. It depends a lot on your tone of voice. Let me give you an example. Hello, I'm M. I'm willing to get this job because I like your company and I think my experience is good and I would really like to have the job. That's close to zero. You have no impact. You need to have an impact and to say, the reason that I'm willing to join your company, name it, is that me, M, I'm really a great fit for your company. And I think that my experience, my knowledge, my skills, my previous experience are going to bring an added value for your current company uh, vision and your future company vision and then to insist on your tone and really to share the passion that you have through your tone. So that would be the second pillar. We have the image, the posture, then you have the tone, and then the very least might be surprising is the content that you are going to answer to that question. So what you are going to answer to the question counts the least. I'm sorry to state that, but it's not going to count because we interact based on different states, different emotions. So you need, first of all, to create those emotions and then to highlight your answers. Now, let's move ahead and start to see a couple of uh, very common questions that we have during an interview. And one of the first one is, tell me about yourself. By this question, the hiring manager is looking to understand your professional profile and the evolution for your career. So what you need to answer to that specific question is first to be as short, as consistent as possible answer in one to three minute maximum, and then to connect your professional experience, your studies, your skills, your application to the company that you are applying to. Please do connect your, your answers for tell me about yourself uh, to a very short and consistent answer, one to three minute maximum, and then to connect your professional experience, studies and skills to the company that you are applying to. That's your momentum. You are going to create your self portrait. Please do use an impactful vocabulary. You might use keywords. You might use everything that will showcase the added value that you have for the company that you are with in that moment during the interview. So keep in mind that answering that question is essential for the very first impression for your personality, your application, to that specific role. And if you manage to also create a logical path where you present it as a personal story, that can attract the hiring manager even more and keep them engaged because they will keep engaged for one to two minutes and then you might lose them. But if you create that history, that story about yourself, that overview about your personality and your professional experience that you that can create your attraction for the hiring manager moving ahead with another common question why would you like to work with us at that question the hiring manager would like to understand your life level of acknowledgement about the company and the motivation for the role just to ensure that you are not not applying by chance in random way so answer in one to two minute maximum and you 
this is the moment where you can highlight everything that you have previously learned about that company. Everything about who the company is, which is the history that they have. They might have 10, 15, 100 years ago. Doesn't matter. It's very important to know the articles, to know who are the hiring managers, which is the company philosophy, which are the leadership principle, the core values, what they are doing, which kind of products, services, or, or um, items they are, they are delivering. Please do showcase what you know about the company because that will attract a lot your, comp uh, your hiring managers. Then link the reasons that you have as a person to the core values, to the main uh, directions that the company has and fit yourself within the company without explicitly saying so. So try to describe you in a present and also future of the company. So let's say that today the company is uh, producing um, let's say uh, offline software. Try to link your software or IT knowledge about the offline software, but also link yourself to a future cloud-based approach or cloud future of the company and try to present, depending on the, the, the impression, the hiring manager personality that you have in front of you, try to fit yourself also within the company future as you are imagining it. Then a question that I really, really like, um, or not that much, is where do you see yourself in five years? I really like, between quotes, that question. But actually what the hiring manager is doing is wanting to understand your professional profile and your vision about your career. So jokes apart, to what, where do you see yourself in five years? Again, be short, be consistent and insist on the fact that you want to have a solid long-term growth within the company, showcase your lo loyalty, uh, your motivation to contribute to the company's success and highlight how you would like to grow bit by bit with the company. So do not insist on your personal growth, but insist on the value added that you can bring to the company for the company to grow and you to grow with the company. So that could be an option of answer to that uh, specific question. Then we have two kinds of questions. So we are going to start with a positive one, which are your superpowers? As a matter of fact, when, when the, the hiring manager is asking about your superpowers, your qualities, they want to know from you which are the reasons for choosing you and not another candidate. So that's also a very, very important question when, where you need to be consistent. And then you need to think about the hiring manager, about the hiring company. So please do keep in mind that your qualities, your superpowers should answer the needs of your company, of the hiring manager company that you are applying to. It's not about you, it's about them. Keep in mind that you need to create a connection between your skills, your superpowers, but also create a clear view on how you interact with your peers, how you are able to teamwork, how you collaborate with your future colleagues. So integrate your qualities also in a business environment where you show that you interact easily with others. And again, mention your both hard and soft skills, where for the soft skills, I would highlight, strongly highlight the teamwork and the collaboration with the others. Then a uh, less pleasant question that you, you might have is, which are, you, which are your defects? Which are your improvement areas? And yes, you need 
to recognize that you have some improvement areas. It's not nice, it's not pleasant, but we, all of us, have some improvement areas. So again, be short, be straightforward, and one recommendation would be to insist on your positive defects. What do I do mean by positive defects? Let me give you an example about answering about your weaknesses, about your defects, about your improvement areas. I'm really um, a perfectionist and I like to have uh, the projects made at the highest possible level. I'm working on balancing the, the highest level of quality with good time management, with good collaboration and also to ensure a fluid business um, framework. So what you are doing answering by uh, in this approach, you are insisting on the fact that you are willing to perform in an ideal mode, which is great. It's not always a good asset for the company. So this is why you are showcasing at the, as a, an improvement area, but you are talking about you being a perfectionist. Then whenever applicable you can mention some examples where your defects or your improvement areas actually solved an issue so let's say that uh, you are obsessed by time management you are really in control of time and you can bring an example where you were working in a group with your peers and you had a three days deadline to to realize a project and by by your time management obsession, you manage to get that project done within one to two days while keeping your peers engaged and positive. So you can turn your defects into advantages, into opportunities for yourself. And then quickly, very quickly present also the way that you are working on improving your uh, development areas just to showcase the fact that you are not staying with your uh, with your um, defects but you are really working on improving them and then one final question that it's very very common but uh, it's not easy to digest it's how do you handle the professional stress so uh, through that question the hiring manager would like to understand the way that you react in stressful or critical situation and it's very very important to keep in mind or to break down what stress is and again to answer in one to two minutes maximum the stress is an inner inside sensation that can be controlled so keep in mind that whenever the hiring manager is going to ask you about the stress you need to keep in mind that the stress cannot be created from outside but can be created from inside yourself so you can control it and highlight the fact that in your personal view, stress appears when control disappears. So that you are working on always being on control. And this is how you are also controlling the stress level. And try to destroy as much as possible. Destroy between quotes. So not to destroy the, the concept of stress because we are all stressed. There are stressful situations. Let's imagine that the, the company it's it's losing uh, I don't know one point by by hour in the in the stock market so that's really stressful so let's keep it real but at the same time try to break down stress by a mix of logic control and positivity and to say okay whenever there is a stressful situation what I'm doing is simply to make a step back to analyze the situation to push back whatever it might be creating a waste for our business growth and then I'm escalating and connecting with the people uh, within my network just to make the things done in a very efficient way and this is the way that I'm fighting back stress. So that's a quick overview about how to successfully uh, pass uh, an interview for an individual contributor if you have any questions any kind of feedback please do comment below 
thank you so much for uh, participating to that video please do like the video subscribe to my channel and see you soon bye bye